day there was something in the lot that we were touching that. What do you think about the exodus when God will And I'm on Jordan. a certain kind of clay that at that point was heavy enough to sink to the bottom and it's perfect for pottery. So let's mm. go to the potter's field and dig some pottery clay. And that, of course, enters the story of Jesus where Judas was, the money from Judas bought a potter's field. And that meant they bought, apparently the clay was no good anymore. Or maybe they just turned a clay field anyway. Hmm. Question? No. I'll show you what the Romans, why, the, why it wasn't important as much anymore. Another one here when it was a little older. So what the sandbags have done is they put those there to hold that wall from collapsing. Now that's a huge debate in archaeology right now because I can tell you, unless something happens here, my grandchildren won't see this. I stand here and I think to myself, what, what's the story of this little house? Did their children love Jesus? Did they get caught up in their culture? Did they change their culture? Will I meet them in heaven? You could easily stand in heaven someday and Somebody says to you, where are you from? They say, sure, in the remains of a city gate. Now, this city gate happens to be so critical because it's dated to the time of Solomon. So if you want to see a building project that Solomon himself... Here, let me tell you a little bit more as we go on, and you'll see why I think that. Now, let's just unpackage this a little bit. A city gate has two functions. Well, what would you say? It's about uh, seven feet thick. Maybe, maybe eight feet at a stretch. And you're seeing it go this way. There goes the city wall. Now, it's not going to be big stones like this in Solomon's time. In the whole wall. They didn't have the kind of technology that could be. Egyptians did, but not Israelites. So the gate has these shaped stones. 110 donkeys. <laughs> and you got to get them all in here to drink. How long is it going to take? You want this out in the open, if it's, don't you? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't tuck this in the back of a stall. They now think, it has a hole in the bottom, they now think this was a measure. So if your taxes were for olive oil, you would measure on here what amount of oil you had to provide for the king. And there may have actually been a chamber beneath here where that could then be drained into the containers that the king would use to store it for time of need. Anyway, commerce. Now, that make sense? So they had to be invited in. Yes. If they followed God's way. Now, let me ask you a question. If this was a Baal worshiping city, whether Canaanite or Israelite, do you think the poor were in the gates? <clears throat> I doubt it. I doubt it. There may have been some kind of program to help them or something, but I don't think you want the poor. I think that's a stunning difference in God's revelation that in his way, the poor are in the gates. I don't think the pagans like that. This also, uh, when John the Baptist was, when he was teaching the message of, of, of repentance, he told the the Sadducees, well, told, told the people to bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. They said, well, what is that? And he said, if you have two coats, go home, get one away. Mm -hmm. If you have meat, do, do likewise. Don't. That's worse they have than being hungry. But while they're hungry, they talk about being right with God. I think Jesus loved to hang out here. Hey Ray, I think I have a psalm too that applies to you. Say it. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Okay. was here when that was written. Second, I want to, I, I pray. You know, my dad used to have a saying, you can't lead a horse to water. You know that one? But he added a line. Maybe it wasn't his, but I never heard anybody else say it. You can't lead a, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But dad always used to say, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make him drink, but boy, you can put salt in his feet. Yeah. Any of what I've learned and known, but I want the picture too. Because often the picture is the kick on the backside. 
that says, okay, you heard it. Now here's what it is in reality. Back in Solomon's time. Coastal plains. Never. Except when there's a drought year. And then the farmers will allow a dry year. When I was here already in um, April filming, then a lot of the flocks from the Negev had been trucked up here to, and that's the story of Joseph and his brother. They went up to Dokkan where they pushed their way in. So that's the story I'm thinking you see that flock of sheep there. Notice it's being led to the middle of the dog. Now the Hittites are to the north. I'm not going to talk about them because they don't enter our story so much. Shepherds. That would correspond today to the Orient, always. So they needed each other, much as the United States moved the Middle East for oil today. Not an unlike comparison at all. You cut off Middle Eastern oil, not that it's oil. Economically. I mean, there's no doubt. That's what was true here. But you really can't travel from Egypt to Babylon. They don't know. They think of desert as flat. That is not flat by any stretch. At least big stretches of it are. So what to do? Walk over there. Then the valley dead end. But you'll notice these breaks left. Past, just past the first hill. And then right, right up toward that tower. The road we came to upper part is the ascent of Beth Haran. Beth Haran. Beth you probably don't remember that. It's in your Bible. So that makes this doubly critical because not only do we have the Via Maris that has to go here between the swamp and the country. Alright, now, a couple of faith lesson thoughts. First, on the median of route, what is it, 77? He could not have put them in the most other place in the world. I thought he put them in northwest Iowa. Came from a quarry about five and a half miles away. They weigh about 28,000 pounds. So you move a 28,000 pound stone without a sky track or whatever you use, a sky track wouldn't lift 28,000 pounds anyway. You get my point. But it can be a foot high, but it has to stand somehow. This is a pottery stone that they believe is from Abraham's time, thousands of years ago. Time for a potty break and guess her. This again is the mountains over towards uh, the Chidean Mountains. This mountain over here is where Jacob had his dream. The Rift Valley, down on the other side, you can't really see it. This is commonly what we do, we meet together, and then he teaches us what happened. <laughs> 